to be saved, did it? Amen. Amen. It's not what I'm going to preach on, but a, verse, a couple of verses I want to read. <coughs> the Apostle Paul <coughs> wrote this. He said, Yea, doubtless, and account all things but lost for the ex excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ, Amen. and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And, and here's the reason. Paul said that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. And I could keep right on going reading that, but uh, the Apostle Paul said, I had a lot. I lost everything, and it means nothing. Amen. We have to know the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter where you're at financially. Physically, mentally, anything else, if you have not Christ, you're dead. Yeah. You're dead. I hear people say all the time, how you doing? And, uh, well, doing good, just glad to be in the land of the living. Well, listen, we're not in the land of the living yet. We're in the land of the dying. You're right. If you don't believe that, pick up a newspaper and look at the obituaries every day. Yeah. But I'm glad that I'm saved. <laughs> I'm glad that I do know the Lord. Amen. And he said, the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead will also quicken your mortal body. <clears throat> One of these days, we're all, we've got, I don't know where you go, but uh, half of us are more probably good at uh, Dave Phillips. But uh, when we get there, that's simply the vehicle that God allowed us to use during our journey down here. But that body is going to be raised from the dead Amen. one day. So it may appear to be dead and the body is dead because of sin. But we're going to know Christ in the power of his resurrection. Yes, Just like he came forth over death, hell, and the grave, we are too. Yeah. We are too. Not by ourselves but by the Spirit that He hath given us. Turn with me, if you will, to the book of Luke. And I'll try not to be very long. Some of them was wanting to know how many more hours we had in church. <laughs> he looked kind of funny when his dad told him probably a couple of hours. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, we won't be that long. Luke chapter 21. Just a couple of verses. Luke 21. Beginning with verse 25. Might seem kind of strange scripture for the message that I'm going to talk about. I preached on about half of this message not too awful long ago. And if you remember uh, any of it, I'll really be proud of you. I had to... Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Joey Van Meter, got up to preach, and I seen him looking at looking in his Bible, and he said, "Ah, oh, another <coughs> rerun." And I said, "You wouldn't know that if you hadn't wrote it down in your Bible when he uh, preached it." I said, "What did he preach about that night?" Well, I don't remember. <laughs> it's exactly right. Exactly right. But anyway, in verse twenty-five of Luke chapter twenty-one it says. There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear. Now, think about that. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud of power and great glory.
And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth not. He is telling us that this world, if you are so concerned with everything that you hear on TV and radio and everything you see and everything you might read on Facebook or in a newspaper or social media or whatever it may be, if you're allowing those things to control your thought, you're allowing those things to control your life, you're in trouble. That's what he's telling us. <clears throat> you're going to die of a heart attack over something that you had no control over to start with and couldn't do a thing about. I don't want to get in that position. I don't want, I, of course, I don't even want to go to Walmart. Sometimes you have to. But I don't want to have to go to Walmart and get in a fist fight so I can squeeze a Charmin. <laughs> do you? No. No. People are running and they're buying up everything they can. Uh, my brother has told me nine times now, in the last nine times that I've talked to him, whatever you're going to get the kids for Christmas, you better be getting them now because uh, those ships can't unload because they don't have workers and this is going on and that's going on and the tariffs are going up and it's going to cost more and just on and on and on, worried to death about what the world is doing and wouldn't darken a church house door for anything. Let's find out what God's doing. I'm not too interested in what Joe O'Biden says. I, I don't really care about anything that he says because he's only saying something that somebody's putting in his ear to say it anyway. He don't even know who he is or where he's at. <laughs> but I, my trust and my faith is not anchored in this world or in the politics of this world or in the things that are doing, they're doing or the things they're saying or the fear that they're mongering. <laughs> that's one of the worst things they can do. Yes. They're destroying lives mm -hmm. by their fear mongering. Mm -hmm. And people just eat it up. Yes, sir, they just scared to death. Scared to death. Better get in line somewhere. Better get there quick. Better get all you can. Mm -hmm. Well, if you get all you can and then run out, what are you going to do if there's nothing left anyway? Yeah. Don't make a whole lot of difference, does it? I'm not worried about those things. I'm concerned about what's taking place, but I can't change it. No. I found out that not even your vote can change it. Because <laughs> they put in whoever they want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And people do not understand the things that are going on and why they are doing the things that are doing. The Bible is being fulfilled and they're running away from God or blaming God when God's not at fault. Right. God's not at fault for anything. God told us what this world was going to do. He told us what the punishment for sin is. He told us we need to be born again. He said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's what Jesus said. Now you can believe whatever you want. That one... Uh, verse that you read, the second verse in the book of uh, 2 John about the health and wealth. There's whole denominations oh, built on that one verse. Yeah. And if you don't believe me, ask Joe Osteen. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only verse in the Bible they know. See, they took what God meant for good and turned it into a denomination, a, a, to a church doctrine, and then they left the author of it completely out. They don't ever mention the blood of the Lord. They never tell you that you could die lost and go to hell. They never tell you that you've got to be born again. They never tell you to repent of your sins. They never tell you to fear God and keep his commandments and to be faithful. I can't believe all the, the teachings that you did this morning on being faithful. But, uh, my mom had a fifth grade education. She didn't know a whole lot, never drove a car in her life. But you know what? She was faithful to God. She was faithful to the house of God. She was faithful, loved her kids enough to take them to church every time the doors is open. And people today, well, I'll go if there's nothing better to do. Amen. That's right. <clears throat> oh, I might be sick tonight. I better stay home tonight. No, we ought to be faithful to God. We ought to let our neighbors know, hey, I'm a born-again believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, 
And I know there's bad circumstances. And I know there's diseases out there. And I know all kinds of ungodly things are happening. But I'm going to go to the house of God. And I'm going to pray about those things. And I'm going to find out what thus saith the Lord concerning these things. But instead, you know what we do? We hunker down and we get afraid. And then we start having bad hearts. Well, I've only had a few heart attacks. Ron, when I get as old as you, I'll probably have a few more. But you know what? My heart's not failing me for fear of the things coming on this world. It's because I'm getting old. Yeah. Ate too many Reese cups or something. I don't know. <laughs> but the Old Testament, it talked about having the fear of God. That man I wrote down here, that's apprehension or dread of impending doom or danger or trouble. But it also means having a reverence to God. That's the kind of fear they're talking about. We ought to fear God. We ought to reverence God. We ought to think, well, I know what the government's telling us, and I know what these people over here are telling us, but I also know what thus saith the word of God. And the only way you'll do that is to read your word and to pray about it and to come to God's house and hear the preaching of the word. But there are so many today, they already know everything. Yeah. They ain't going to learn anything from me or you, Pastor. <laughs> Let me tell you, I want to read a couple of verses here. God is a God that he's not going to send anybody to hell. He's a loving God. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't do that. That's why every funeral you see, they were of the Baptist faith. Or they went to church twice in their life. Man, they don't, they don't deserve to go to hell. But they lived ungodly, filthy lives. Or sometimes they were real good and still lost. He said, these are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is reserved Forever. Who do you think he's talking about? Those that have forsaken the right way and gone astray and followed the way of Balaam. But God, but God wouldn't punish this entire nation. There's too many Christians. <laughs> Punished all of Israel over a few ungodly things going on many, many times. Yeah. Many, many times. But listen to what else happened. He said, if God spared not the angels that sinned. Think about the multiplied millions of created beings, angels, that worshiped God at one time. Or if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. You think about that, that those who followed Satan. Those who listened to him. When he wanted to exalt himself above God and everything that is called God. But that was the angels. Those were created beings. Well, we are too. We're created beings. He said, and spared not the old world. But he saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Now we're not going to see the flood come and kill everybody again. But we are going to see the fire come. I mean, I don't know how many of us will physically see it, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Just like it did, he turned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. And you go to the polls and you vote in the people that says God was wrong concerning homosexuality. Amen. And he delivered just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked for that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. He chose to live among the ungodly. And it hurt him. Amen. And it hurt his testimony. 
And it nearly took his soul. But thankfully, the Lord knew how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Uh, you can go right on and read that in the Second Peter chapter 2. Over and over and over and over, God has warned us. And over and over, I've seen people come into the house of God and they're unsaved or they're backslidden at heart and they leave the same way that they came in. And they don't have to. Amen. They don't have to. Let me tell you, your neighbors know whether you love the Lord enough to go to church or not. And you, you could go to church every time any church doors open and still be unsaved because just going to church is not the thing. But letting them see. Letting your neighbors know. Let yourself know. I need the word of God. I need the fellowship of the church. I need to hear the truth. Aaron, I love to hear you preach. Yes. Right. I told Brother Jim Cremines, I said, let me tell you something. There's not a better preacher in the tri-state. I wasn't trying to get you a raise or get you the big deal. <laughs> But God destroys that which is unfaithful. Amen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Don't tell me how faithful you are when you're unfaithful. Right. Got a brother, and I tell him all the time. Most of you know who I'm talking about. I said, you got a critical statement about everybody that you know in church. You point a finger at everybody that you know. But you won't attend church. And there's a reason why he won't. Because his wife don't believe you need to go to church. I've told him. I said, ain't no use get mad at me. You ought to be, be, be the man of the house. You ought to set your foot down and say, yeah, I'm going to go to God's house and I'm going to take my kids with me. The kids are grown, I'm going to take my grandkids with me. It's somebody's responsibility, isn't it? It is. I got run off from one church for preaching that. Got run off because a pastor had 15 or 16 of his kids and grandkids living with him and come to church alone or just him and his wife. Never bring the grandkids I said, that's wrong. That's about as wrong as you can get. God's judgment and his power ought to put the fear into every soul that's should. unsaved. Yeah, and I know that people see the power of God. I know just in the testimony from and the prayer request from you and Ron that God's hand of mercy, God's hand of grace, God's hand of healing reached out and touched those that very well were on their deathbeds. Amen. It's the power of God. Yes. And people see that and people hear the testimony of it. They hear the witness of it. And yet they go on their way <clears throat> thinking, well, that might be true, that might not be true. I don't know what they think. I don't know what they think. But I know one thing. It ought to cause people to serve the Lord. It, should. it ought to. And if not serving, at least have the respect for those who do. There's probably nothing that makes me any more sad angry, whatever the terminology may be, when somebody says, well, I just don't believe that stuff. We buried my, one of my aunts, one of mom's last sisters. She was 89 years old. <coughs> had gotten saved not too long ago. And her husband, who had went to church with her, walked out the door I said, that stuff is not for me. 95. And then 
just the other day, he said, he's watching a gospel preacher on TV. Don't know who it was. Somebody told me who they thought it was, and I said, I hope not. But anyway, he said, I almost made that call. I almost was persuaded. Still lost. You can be a good person, and you can be almost persuaded, and you can be right on the verge of saying, now the next time this happens or the next time so-and-so is preaching, I'm going to give my heart to the Lord. You may never hear that person preach again. That's exactly right. You may never see what you were waiting on. <laughs> we ought to fear God and know. I, I'm not afraid of these ones that's able to destroy the body. But think about the one who's able to destroy both body and soul in hell. And I don't have to fear him anymore in that sense. Because I'm one of his children. Because I'm redeemed. Because I've been bought with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without spot or without blemish. And because I know it's real. Don't tell me it's not real. You don't have to believe it if you don't want to. But if you want to get me upset, you tell me I just don't believe it. I know what happened. Just like you said, you the bitterness and the angriness and the and the hatred that you have in your heart toward those hypocrites in the church when you get saved. My goodness, they all changed, didn't they? Did. They're not That's hypocrites it. anymore. And you can put your arm around him and love him. But most of all, it's because you've been born again. Yes. God takes away a lot from a person when they come and give their heart to the Lord. Yeah. But you can go on and you can hang on to it. And you can suffer through it. And you can fight it. And you can let it get you down the rest of your life. Or you can take it and lay it at the foot of the cross and leave it there. Too many people want to take it and lay it at the foot of the cross and then after they're done praying, they want to pick it up and carry it back out the door with them. Leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. As we get a song of invitation, I'm going to